Hello friends, this is a special edition of the Bible Hour. My wife is inside shopping at Target, and so I thought that I would take opportunity to spend the time wisely and maybe put together a short, brief study that hopefully will be a blessing to you today. In recent days, I've been having some debates on Facebook with regards to the Kingdom of God versus the Kingdom of Heaven. Believe it or not, there are people out there who are actually teaching that the Kingdom of God and the Kingdom of Heaven are the same thing. Probably one of the more prominent people teaching this heresy is Stephen Anderson of the Faithful Word Baptist Church of Tempe, Arizona. Now, of course, Anderson has also been uh, very prominent uh, with regards to the post-tribulation rapture of the church heresy as well. And so it is no surprise whatsoever that he is completely unable to rightly divide the word of truth with regards to the kingdom of God and the kingdom of heaven also. Now, as we consider the kingdom of God and the kingdom of heaven, the first thing that stands out right away is the fact that God is not heaven, and heaven is not God. God is the creator. Heaven is a creation. Therefore, simple English would show you that the kingdom of God and the kingdom of heaven cannot possibly be the same thing. I'm sure that any third, fourth, or fifth grader in a kindergarten Sunday school class can figure that out. Why a pastor of a local church who purports himself to be a Bible teacher cannot figure that out is completely beyond me. But that aside, when you come to the scriptures, it is the scriptures themselves that clearly identify that the kingdom of God and the kingdom of heaven are not the same thing. For example, the kingdom of heaven is only found in the book of Matthew. The kingdom of heaven is never mentioned anywhere else in the Bible outside of the book of Matthew. That's very important for us to consider in light of the fact that Matthew is a specific gospel written to the Jews to portray Jesus Christ as the king of the Jews. Now, each of the gospel writers had a different purpose in writing, and each one of them uh, has a different theme uh, with regards uh, to their writings. Uh, Matthew, of course, as I just said, is written to the Jews to manifest Jesus Christ as the king of the Jews. Mark presents Jesus Christ as the servant of God. Uh, Luke presents Jesus as the Son of Man, emphasizing his humanity. And then, of course, the Gospel of John presents Jesus Christ as the Son of God, or God manifest in the flesh. And so each of the Gospel writers had a specific reason in writing their Gospel and writing what they wrote in their Gospels. Now, whereas the Kingdom of God is found in all of the Gospels, uh, in the Kingdom of Heaven, well, I take that back, the God, uh, Kingdom of God uh, it is not found in all the Gospels, but it's certainly found in other books outside uh, of the book of Matthew. And so, for example, the kingdom of God is mentioned in Mark, uh, Matthew, and Luke, whereas the kingdom of heaven, once again, is only mentioned in Matthew. And so it is a uh, literal, physical, Davidic, visible kingdom that is taken by force. If you have your Bibles close by, take your Bibles and come over to the book of Matthew. And in the book of Matthew, come, if you will, to chapter number 11. Because in Matthew chapter 11, Jesus Christ defines for us what this kingdom of heaven is. Come to Matthew chapter 11, and uh, let's come to right around verse 12. Matthew chapter 11, verse number 12. Um, actually, back up just a couple verses. Uh, Jesus, speaking of John the Baptist, says, Verily I say unto you, among them that are born of women, there hath not risen a greater than John the Baptist. Notwithstanding, he that is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. And from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffereth violence, and the violent take it by force. Now notice it said there that the kingdom of heaven suffereth violence, and the violent take it by force. How can the kingdom of heaven be taken by force by those who are violent? It can be taken by force by those who are violent because it is a literal kingdom, it is a visible kingdom, it is a physical kingdom, and ultimately it is a Davidic kingdom as far as the fulfillment of the promises given to the house of David. And so the kingdom of heaven is a literal, visible, physical Davidic kingdom that can be taken by force. And of course when Jesus Christ comes back to the earth, guess how he is going to take the kingdom? He's going to take it by force. If you'll take your Bibles and come to the book of Revelation, and come to Revelation chapter number 11. And in Revelation chapter number 11, come to verse number 15. 
In Revelation chapter 11, verse 15, the Bible says, And the seventh angel sounded, and there were great voices in heaven, saying, The kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ, and he shall reign forever and ever. So the kingdoms of this world that constitute the kingdom of heaven are going to become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ at the second advent of Jesus Christ. The kingdom of heaven suffereth violence, and the violent take it by force. Where does that happen, you might ask? Well, it happens in Revelation chapter number 19. In Revelation chapter number 19, verse 11, it says, And I saw heaven opened, and behold a white horse, and he that sat upon him was called Faithful and True. And in righteousness he doth judge and make war. And his eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns, and he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood. That's not his blood. That's the blood of his enemies, as we'll see in just a few moments. And his name is called the Word of God. And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen, white and clean. And out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword, that with it he should smite the nations. And he shall rule them with a rod of iron. And he treadeth the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of Almighty God. And he hath on his vesture and on his thigh a name written, King of kings and Lord of lords. That is the literal second advent of Jesus Christ. That is the kingdoms of this world becoming the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ, and he shall reign forever and ever. That is Jesus coming back to take over the kingdoms of this world. He's taking them by force. He's taking them by violence, and he is establishing his kingdom on this earth. Therefore, the kingdom of heaven is a literal physical, visible, Davidic kingdom that shall be set up by the Lord Jesus Christ. Now this is altogether not the same whatsoever as the kingdom of God. Whereas the kingdom of heaven is literal and physical and visible, the kingdom of God is said to be spiritual and said to be within you. Notice, if you will, please, the book of Luke. Come to the book of Luke and come to Luke chapter 17. And Luke chapter 17 we find that the Bible gives us a very different view of the kingdom of God in contrast to the kingdom of heaven. And Luke chapter number 17, come if you will to verse number 20. Luke 17, 20. And when he was demanded of the Pharisees when the kingdom of God should come, he answered them and said, The kingdom of God cometh not with observation. Now do you see that? The kingdom of God cometh not with observation. Not with observation. Not with observation. I'm saying this over and over again to emphasize the point so that people like Stephen Anderson, Sean Barnish, Frederick Potts, and others can get this through their thick heads that the kingdom of God is not physical. It comes not with observation because it is a spiritual kingdom and that is in contrast with the kingdom of heaven which is a physical, visible kingdom that does come with observation. He says, The kingdom of God cometh not with observation, neither shall they say, Lo here or lo there. For behold, the kingdom of God is within you. Now, do you see that? The kingdom of God comes not with observation because the kingdom of God is within you. And it is the result of the new birth. And even as you cannot see the new birth take place physically, you cannot see the kingdom of God coming with observation because the kingdom of God is within you. Take your Bibles for a moment now and come to John chapter 3. John chapter 3. In John chapter 3, notice if you will in verse 1. In John chapter 3 verse 1, it says, There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. The same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God, for no man can do these miracles that thou doest, except God be with him. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus saith unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of the water, physical, natural birth, not baptism, and of the Spirit, 
he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. So let me correct what I said earlier. I made a statement that the kingdom of God is not found in all four Gospels. I forgot that it is mentioned right here in John chapter 3. So it is mentioned in all four Gospels. So let me correct my previous uh, misstatement. But he says, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Now watch verse 6. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I said unto thee, ye must be born again. And so one enters into the kingdom of God by the new birth. One enters into the kingdom of God by a spiritual birth from above. One enters into the kingdom of God not with observation because the kingdom of God is within you. And it's not with observation because it cannot be seen. That's why Jesus said in verse number 8, The wind bloweth where it listeth. In other words, where it wishes, where it wants to. And thou hearest the sound thereof but canst not tell whence it cometh, where it comes from, and whither it goeth, where it's going. So it is, or so is everyone that is born of the Spirit. And so when someone gets born again, you cannot see them getting born again. But like the wind in the trees, you can see the effects of someone who has been born again. And so, when someone tries to tell you that the kingdom of God, which is spiritual within you and comes without observation and is obtained by the new birth, is the same thing as the kingdom of heaven, which is a literal, visible, physical kingdom that's taken by force, that person is someone who either A, has not read the word of God, or B, does not believe the word of God, or C, is a lost agent of Satan that is hell-bent on deceiving the minds of the simple. And I pray that that won't happen to you. Now, one other verse I'd like to give you with regards to the kingdom of God, which shows that it's a spiritual kingdom and not a literal, visible, physical kingdom, is found in the book of Romans. Come to the book of Romans and come to Romans chapter 14. And in Romans chapter 14, um, come, if you will, to verse 17. It says, verse 17, Romans chapter 14, verse 17, For the kingdom of God is not meat, now, meat, of course, is something that is physical. And drink. Drink is something that is physical. But righteousness, which is spiritual, peace, which is spiritual, and joy, which is spiritual, in the Holy Ghost. Let me read that again. For the kingdom of God is not meat and drink. In other words, it's not literal or physical or visible. But it is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost, and each one of those things is spiritual. And so uh, I realize that this is just a brief uh, Bible study. It is a brief uh, exhortation, uh, but I was so uh, moved by some of the discussions that I saw on Facebook that I wanted to take the time sitting here in the cabin of my truck in the parking lot of a Target Superstore to make sure I corrected the erroneous doctrine that's being put out by Stephen Anderson and his cult-like discipleship followers such as Frederick Potts, Sean Barnish, and others that are deceiving the hearts and minds of the simple. And I realize that this video will probably get nowhere near the number of views that Stephen Anderson's video will get uh, uh, in, in, instead. But that's fine. May the Lord God bless uh, these feeble efforts and bring forth fruit and honor his word. In Jesus' name, amen.